Hey guys, let me start by saying it's probably a good idea to grab a cup of tea or coffee as this video is a good length, but it's also kind of needed, so I do hope you can make it to the end. Additionally, there isn't any visual aid used in this video, just old clips put together to make up the time, so you can leave it running in the background while you're listening to everything. The real crux is the commentary. Hopefully you can make it to the end and give your views in the comment section below. Thanks. Jason Schreer released a pretty damning article on the current situation of Anthem and why it so colossally failed. Despite the efforts of Bioware for Anthem to become unmemeable, yes that was actually a target for them, it's clearly become the greatest meme of all and has at this point surpassed even the failed launch of No Man's Sky. And no, we don't talk about Fallout 76 so don't even mention it, you know who you are, don't do it, you've been told. It goes without saying, Anthem has had an extremely rocky launch, with each passing update fixing things while breaking so many more in the process. So many theories were being passed about. I for one assumed this game was a single player game. I do know from someone who actually works in EA that the game was reset three years ago, among many other theories that was going around as to why Anthem was in this condition. And at the same time, what's crazy about this is that they were all wrong but at the same time, all partially correct. Certain aspects of everything was just correct. When we take the original concept of the game being a single player mode, that could have very well been the case because no one knew where it was going. As for the reset three years ago, it's been reset multiple times because there's been no clear direction. So to understand the problems that Anthem faced, you really need to start from the beginning. Concepting for Anthem started in 2012, two years before Destiny was released. No, not Destiny 2, but the original Destiny. While this may seem like a crazy time frame, it's actually quite normal. What is not normal is the fact that pre-production ended late 2017, early 2018. Yes, this was even after the E3 demo of 2017 that wowed so many gamers out there. It's crazy to think that what we have right now is the miracle the devs managed to turn around in 12 to 16 months they had to create the game. You want to call it Bioware magic? Call it what you like. But more on the Bioware magic later because that really needs to die. And it needs to die now. But more on that in a bit. The mismanagement of this new IP was clear from the offset. It's crazy to read some of the stuff that was going on in Bioware with no real vision, direction or destination. Let me just give you an example, originally Anthem was to have multiple cities, that was what was put on the table, but as time ran low, they immediately knew this was no longer possible. The next option was for multiple outposts or settlements like Division 2 has. Again, great ideas, but no time. The pre-production shenanigans, which I will call shenanigans because it's complete bullshit for something to take that long, took over 5 years with nothing having been decided. It's pretty awful to even remotely think about working under these conditions when you know what's coming, especially having seen the working conditions of Andromeda and Inquisition. With the realisation sinking in fast, they opted for one city and Striders. The Striders being the social spots within the game world, but time again would not allow them for all of it was wasted. And by wasted, I mean it was wasted under five years that they all got around in meetings, sat down and did jack shit. This is the case here. They were debating about fixes and changes and directions with no one there to say, hey guys, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. Let's get to it. There was no decision maker. No one was there with the hammer to say, right guys, this is what we're doing. They had no figure there to basically direct them. There was no vision for Anthem. In the end, what was originally desired in multiple cities ended up being a single fort. To showcase how little time they had, even voice lines recorded couldn't be re-recorded despite the flow of the story changing continuously. I mean, why record the storylines if you're going to change the story? It makes no sense. They, this here is again a clear example of them just not knowing what the hell is going on. You can't continuously re-record a motion capture, it's expensive stuff. You can't do that and I don't blame EA for, you know, turning around and telling them like, you know, you've got one shot at this, do it when it's ready and you doing it whenever the hell you want and then saying, oh well this guy's leaving so let's change the story, it's ludicrous. So why they would change the story is anyone's guess, especially after recording it all. 
Gaeta created some great storytelling with this being a major plus for Dragon Age Inquisition, and to turn him away from Anthem was silly, but that's what happened. It was noted that in 2015-2016 there was hardly no progress due to management not being able to decide what they wanted. We're talking about a whole year here, it's crazy. In fact, up until the E3 demo in 2017, even the developers didn't know what they were making, type of game they were working on because the decisions were changed almost daily. There was no vision and no direction. And this is the core deficit, the core mismanagement of why Anthem became the way it is. It's crazy how anyone can work like this and relying on this so-called Bioware magic to pull them through is just plain incompetence. The Bioware magic could essentially be categorised as running your dev team to the ground till they have absolutely nothing to give, even their soul. I mean, when you have developers wishing Dragon Age Inquisition had actually failed, so that it could highlight issues that were currently there sooner, you know there are real problems here. Part of this problem is due to the Frostbite engine, sure, which clearly isn't designed for games like this. The Frostbite engine simply isn't good enough for RPGs, it's missing so many basic features like inventory, camera view, save and load functionality, all of which had to be specifically created from scratch, all which takes time to build and implement the tools needed among other things. All this needed to be created from scratch when they could have easily used an Unreal Engine. I understand EA's desire to unify all projects under one engine and the cost benefits of this were clearly the motivator here instead of the usual licensing of the Unreal Engine. That's fine, Massive with their Snowdrop engine are also in the same boat here. This all needed time, and time is something that they simply didn't get. Well, I say didn't get, they had 7 years, they had all the time in the world, but considering pre-production took 5 years, they had 2 years to decide on what the hell was going on. So despite the lack of time being available, in the end, Frostbite teams were constantly being pulled to other games that were generating more money. FIFA is a prime example of this, with their microtransactions alone bringing in millions of dollars every year. So from EA's standpoint, this was a smart business move, but Anthem was still suffering. And sure, Frostbite might not be the greatest and easiest solution to use, but had they been given the time needed for this, it's hard to imagine this would have been a problem looking ahead. But due to again the massive mismanagement of the project by the directors being unable to decide what they wanted to do, this was a luxury ill afforded to them. So I really feel for the developers. You know, the people that are actually behind those desks, working away, coding away, doing their utmost best to get something out there tangible for us to use, for us to play on, my heart goes out to them because they gave everything. But the people above them, the ones in the upper chairs, they were the ones that clearly turned around and couldn't give two shits. All they cared about was sitting in that room, having a meeting, and coming to no decision for five years. I'm sorry, this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable in any practice. Heads would roll if this happened where I work. Just saying, this is totally unacceptable. And the fact that the developers were, in the end, receiving the brunt of everything through the crunch, it's disgusting. It, it really is. It's disgusting. My heart goes out to them. With that said though, I know people will want to blame EA for this. I mean, it's only natural that they are the first to be blamed. They are EA after all, Electronic Arts, the big evil corporation. But in all honesty, they really are not to blame here. EA has waited seven years for a finished product, which through the incompetence of the powers in charge at Bioware, and it is incompetence, there is no other word to describe this level of failure, I honestly, and for the first time in a long time, can't blame EA, and even with the hard deadline that EA had committed them to, ultimately they waited 7 years for a finished product, that's plenty of time. They shouldn't have to wait 10 years for something because they decided to have a chit chat show in meetings for 5 years, I mean, come on, that is more than enough time. How Bioware chose to waste that time is on them, I'm sorry, it's not on EA. This, I'm afraid to say, is solely on the shoulders of Bioware and Bioware alone. Sure, Frostbite is EA, but had they not wasted 5 years in pre-production, they wouldn't be in the place they are now, and no, I'm not saying the engine is perfect, but given the right time, you can create tools, no? So no, this isn't on EA, but on Bioware, and they need to take responsibility for this, and changes need to be made.
To add one more note on the Frostbite engine, everyone under the sun that's a game enthusiast knows that the Frostbite engine is a pig to work with. It's horrible. So if I know this, you guys watching this video know this, it's fair to assume that the directors at Bioware also have this information and it's available to them that this is a really nasty piece of engine to work with. With that knowledge, if you're still giving your developers one year to make a game, that's on you. And this is why I'm detracting any blame from EA, even through the usage of Frostbite. If you know something is going to take a long time to work with and you need to create tools for because the engine is plain shit, because let's be fair here, Frostbite is simply not designed for this. It's a horrible engine for things like this. You incorporate that to your estimates for time in development. Not doing so again is, drumroll please, mismanagement. There we go, that word again, mismanagement. Everything revolves around mismanagement. Patrick Sutherland, the then CEO of EEA, was at the time presented with the Anthem demo. When he saw the first demo presented to him, he pretty much said that it sucked and it was not up to the standards that he was expecting, especially after 5-6 years. He ordered them to go back and make things better and bring flying back into the picture, despite it being removed and re-added, constantly driving the developers crazy as with each decision to include and not include flying, the world design needed to change for this to be compatible. Now, he isn't a gamer. And even he could tell what Bioware was doing was pure garbage. This is the so-called Edmonton branch that looks down at other departments of the branches of Bioware like they are of some superior pedigree. No, he is just an average guy that plays games and even he could see what Bioware presented was rubbish. The question is, how did that build that made it to the CEO even pass standards of acceptability for a Bioware Edmonton project with a superiority complex? Well, technically, I guess that answered its own question. After this was rejected, Bioware came back with another second build, one that included flying and placed it in front of Patrick Sutherland in spring 2017. This, with the flying placed back in, was deemed acceptable. Then came the biggest bombshell, the one that threw everyone reading off. It's insane, guys! The E3 trailer, in fact, was completely doctored. It was completely fake. It was the greatest lie to ever be recorded in the games industry since the Doom fiasco, which was said to be in development for 15 years when in fact it wasn't ever in development. As this was on the center stage of E3, this trumped anything anyone could pull off. To be fair though, it did serve one purpose. It allowed and helped the developers to finally understand what the damn game was. Then accept reality that the nightmare that took place with Andromeda and Inquisition was about to become a reality all over again. And this time they were going to be the starring heroes of this survival horror. Which as we find out, many came out scathed with injuries ranging from depression to mental health issues with mentions of employees cowering in closets crying because of the amount of pressure they were put under. This is so bad. These conditions are horrific. I'm sorry, but reading what they were going through really hurts. Now I will add this, so do take this into consideration. These people were suffering, so their responses when questioned will naturally be subjective and not objective. Now each person suffers in a different way, each person has a break in a, in a different way. So I'm not saying that they are lying, but generally, when you revisit a painful memory or a painful time, or if you're still in there, even if it's, say, at a scale of 7, you would say it's an 11, because it's affecting you and you're suffering for it. So when employees were saying that X was happening, Y was happening, people were breaking down and all this, do take that into consideration that what would be a 7 for you may be an 11 for them. So I wanted to get that out there because objectively I do want to keep things correct. Everyone's experience, how we, how an objective person will view the situation compared to the person actually experiencing it subjectively will differ completely. But again, the fact that people were going into closets and crying, the fact that people were going into deep depression and having to take time off work, actually having mental health issues and taking months off work, it's a clear indication that things were ultimately failing in a very, very bad way. And throughout all of this, Bioware couldn't care less. All they cared about 
was that Bioware magic kicking in and getting to the finish line. Because from where we're standing through the article, that is the image that's been painted. From where we're standing from how the employees were responding and how they responded today, yes, today, it's clear that things haven't changed and this is still the case for Bioware. The game was never supposed to be a looter shooter as a core game. It was supposed to be a completely different style of game. One that embraced exploration and adventuring in the beyond. Hence the original name which ultimately had to be changed due to the inability to gain the trademark for the said name beyond. You were supposed to explore the beyond on this foreign planet in your suit as your defense against creatures of mass size and magnitude as you tried to survive. When the decision came to make a looter shooter, the core of the game wasn't designed for this and it's blatantly obvious as well. There wasn't enough loot to make this even remotely possible. Dropping this on the last minute and changing direction hurt the game a lot more than Bioware realised. We constantly complain that Bioware doesn't test their game. This is something that has been echoed by the community a lot and I for one have stood at the forefront saying that testing every scenario is impossible. But I stand here dumbfounded by the revelation and again saying sorry to you all, I was wrong. The revelation that came stating that the developers actually couldn't play the game they were making decisions on, tweaking and so on is crazy. Without a game to test your code on the game, you're simply stuck questioning yourself as to what is enough. Is what you did right? You have no idea. In fact, one developer went as far as saying that only in the last nine months did they have anything tangible properly to test on. Previously, they were stuck with the servers not working or playing an offline version, which takes nothing into account on the small bit of game they had up and running, which is not the same. It's hard to accept that their game wasn't tested, and this just confirms it. And though things may have changed now, it's those actions from initial build that are actually the root cause of everything. So when people complain, don't you test your game? They have every right to because you didn't test your game. You couldn't test your game because you didn't even have enough time to test your game. It's really pathetic. I mean when they realised how little content they had in Anthem, they decided that trying to extend the game with arbitrary filler garbage content was the way to go. I mean this is always a bad idea, you should never do this. No developer should ever do this. The original idea was that the tomb mission was to be time gated. Clearly this idea was so stupid and dumb it went out when literally everyone was against it except the person that actually suggested it. Gates were removed, thank god, and in its place was this mission that had no relevance to anything about opening doors. No riddles, no keys, nothing. Just pointlessness that was filled for one simple reason. To extend the game as much as possible. So it's no surprise that many people started leaving Bioware in the final two years. Aaron Flynn left starting his own company, taking with him a number of key personnel who, like Aaron, had had enough of the working conditions, directions and mismanagement at Bioware. These range from art, animation, technical, lead directors. They all left. These are core positions within a franchise. These are core positions that you can't just have leave in the final two years. You can't afford to do that, but this is what happened. These people were here for over a decade, just think about that for a second. They were here working at Bioware for a decade. It takes a lot to have someone in their position to actually leave. With all these people leaving, so did the Bioware magic and this form of development is no longer feasible. It's impossible to do things under these conditions. It wasn't until Mark Dara came along and took charge of the project in 2017 that the game finally started to make progress where the decisions were just being made. Dara, a few years before, posted a tweet saying that he wasn't working on Anthem that magically appeared on it. He even appeared at the top, overtaking Jonathan Warner. It's crazy how in two years he managed to become the head honcho and lead the pile. But this is what Mark Dara done and credit to him, he's amazing. He went from one crunch in Dragon Age Inquisition straight to Anthem with another crunch but he managed to pull through and get where he needed to be by making those decisions where he was relied on and depended on and in the end it worked and I'm pretty damn sure the development team that is there respect him a hell of a lot more for doing so, for getting them over the finishing line one way or another. When we saw the E3 demo 
We were all hyped and excited at the possibilities of another of what another year could do to this. Meanwhile, in the office at Bioware, the developers were like, "Oh shit, that's the game! What the hell is this? First time we've seen this. You expect us to make this in a year? You crazy?" Leadership was bad from the get-go. Issues constantly raised were ignored. Concerns were dismissed. I get issues and concerns can be dismissed, but if a lot of people on a daily basis are raising the same damn issues, you don't dismiss them, you listen to those concerns. If all your staff is saying the same thing, you don't go on some merry-go-round happy pill and start to say to yourself, things are fine, things are fine, things are, things are fine, things are fine, because they're not. And if you're going to have that attitude, especially in a time like this when time critical is of the essence, maybe you're in the wrong job. Seriously. I mean, Bioware and EA really need to look into this. This isn't just a minor thing here. There's been critical failures here, like real critical, hard failures that are dismissible. People having mental health issues due to your mismanagement is a critical failure. Bioware, however, did come out with a response. And it was very undermining and really disheartening. And I really feel sorry for the developers who are working there. Who, if it was me, I would have handed my resignation notice and left them in the lurch. I would have walked out straight away. That's me. I'm dumb like that. You might, because, you know, you have bills. But my principles generally just make me full retard and I go and do the dumbest things possible. But if it's right, it's right. And I would have done that. That's me personally. Because, honestly... Their response was extremely disrespectful to the team that worked on it. Bioware's response was a PR response, one that you would expect without any meaningful context. Saying they prioritised management of the projects to avoid crunch time clearly is them being misguided and in full damage control. Five years of pre-production is 100% unacceptable. Saying that they value and put first high priority the conditions of their staff's health, well, I mean, if... That is them putting their staff's health at highest priority, depression, crying in closets, mental health issues going off work for four months. I'd hate to see what the other priorities are down below that, because if that's where their number one priority is, holy shit, I don't want to know what the other ones are, because they're pretty much going to be below earth level, pretty much edging to the earth's core, burning away as each one gets closer to it with the amount of no fucks given. Trying to master problems and saying there was none in both the conception and management of Anthem is not the right way for this. But at the same time, like any other company, fingers are not pointed openly at people. Questions are not asked openly to people. It's not professional. So when Bioware said that they are standing and protecting their employees, it's a blanket statement. But if we see people losing their jobs over the next few weeks, you know why and you know where it's come from. It's that simple. Behind closed doors, there is a raging volcano going on in there right now. I can almost assure it. So, to those employees who saw the blanket response and are disheartened by it, I'm pretty sure some of them will come forward to Jason Schreer and tell them that, you know, shit's getting real in the house of Bioware. Because there is no way in hell that any legitimate company that has any legitimate sense can allow this level of mismanagement, misguidedness, and honestly, negligence, pure negligence, to go unscathed. It just can't do it. I will end on this though. This needed to be brought to life and exposed to everyone, as this practice of working needs to end, and changes must be brought in place. Lessons need to be learned from this. And if this is the article that forces that change, I'm all for it and support the expose and all it stands for. The last thing we want is someone having a completely and utterly psychotic break and going on a genocidal spree and start actually killing people where they work because they finally snapped. We see this happening all the time where people run to schools in America and other places like this. It's a really serious issue. Once you break and you snap, you snap. If these practices continue, it really isn't going to be long before we hear of games companies suffering this sort of thing once a developer or someone in there has actually snapped beyond all control and just goes all crazy and attacks people. Again, my heart to the developers, I hope something like this will never come to place. I hope something like this will never be a reality and things will change and lessons will be learned.
But if history has taught me anything, and if past presidents has shown me anything, one thing is for certain. The moment money becomes a motivational factor, everything goes out the window and greed steps in. Well guys, that's my view on everything. I'm pretty disappointed with the way it's gone. I think it's really, really horrible the way the developers were being treated. But all in all, I hope you made it this far, you listened, and uh, I hope, like me, you won't change, because change needs to happen, because the developers are people too. And honestly, as cliche as that sounds, without them we have no games, and treating them like dog shit isn't the way to go. So the next time you see a developer out there, just know that like the team from Bioware, they probably have another boss that's also treating them in a harsh manner. Maybe not as bad as Bioware, but generally developers have it rough because they're the middlemen that just fix it guys, right? So do keep in mind and if you do see them around, just turn around and say thank you for your hard work. Because believe me, them hearing you say that means the world to them, more than anything you could offer them. That notion of gratitude means everything and will go a long way in maintaining their sanity and their mental health, keeping them in a focused and calm place. Thank you for listening to this video. Until the next time, Thank you.